Okay, all right, so, so as I said before, um, last week we looked at sensitivity analysis and um, we look at the sensitivity graph as well as we look at the as well as we look at the uh, the break even analysis so today we're going to focus on the concept of uh, basic uh, probabilities as well as um, look at structure and the decision tree or um, and how that can help us in making decisions. So the principle of probability will help us to understand um, risk and how we can make decisions um, given uh, some probability. And um, the decision making tree is a, prob is a probabilistic information. So we, we basically set out the decision making in terms of um, like a tree and each branch would have some a, a probability associated with it and um, use this information a result of a decision to be structured so as to make a uh, best uh, decision. So what's a, what's a random variable? So a random variable is a parameter or a variable that can take on numbers of uh, different possibilities or outcome and we are referring to probabilities so we basically we'll be talking about outcomes so only one of those uh, outcomes will eventually occur so only one of those outcomes usually will occur and the reason for that is that if more than if if you have uh, more than one outcome occurring then you will you your probability it will distort your probability distribution so only one of those outcome will eventually occur unknown which at the time of the decision when the decision is made so a probability distribution function um it describes the likelihood of a number of each outcome or event so a likelihood of each outcome or event can be described by uh, the probability distribution function. So if these events are sure. mutually exclusive, can I stop yeah. you for one second? Uh huh. Uh, we we can't see your screen right now. If you're if you're sharing it, I, I see you're going through the PowerPoint slide, but I don't see I don't see your screen. You're yeah, not seeing my screen. Oh, uh, thanks for saying that. No. I thought I thought you guys were seeing it. I I said share, and then um, so I, I assumed that it was being shared. So, oh yeah, it's not. Okay. Came off back there. Are you seeing it now? Yep, I can see it now. Okay. Um, sorry about that, guys. I thought you were able to see my screen. Okay. And, um, okay. There we go. Now I have to get rid of this thing from in front of me. All right, fine. Okay, so, so if the events are mutually exclusive and are collectively exhaustive, a probability distribution function Px is a set of numbers measured. So mutually exclusive, meaning that if one event occurs, the other one won't occur, as um, as we said before, and. Um, and um, collectively exhaustive means that you have covered all the possible outcomes. So a probability distribution function, Px, where Px, P of x represents um, each probability, the probability of each outcome is a set of numerical uh, measurements, Px of P of xi. So when the numbers of outcome for a random variable are discrete, and then x is a discrete random variable. So discrete means that you can uh, pretty much, it's, it's not continuous, it doesn't have infinite amount of values say between two defined points. So for example, you could count one, two, three, four. So x is a discrete random variable and p 
of x, which is a probability again, is uh, is referred to as a discrete uh, probability distribution function. So symbol used for random variable is usually uh, uh, capitalized. That is for a discrete random variable, the capital X outcome are denoted by small x, x1, x2, x3. And its probability distribution function is P of x. So we could write the probability that x takes on value xi is written as, uh, as P of x equal to small x, which is the probability of each outcome. So let's look at an example. Suppose that you were testing soldering uh, solder giants on a printed circuit board and that you are interested in determining the probability distribution function for the random variable x. The number of, out of, giant, of open giants in these, in the three tested giants, right? So there are the number of open giants in the three tested giants where x can take on four possible outcomes, either None of the giants are open, one of the giants is open, two of the giants are open, or all three are open. So four possible outcomes. So there are no other possible outcome because you can't have like a half opening of a giant, uh, so on. So the set of possible test results are either open or closed. So it's either that all three are open, or two are open, one closed, uh, sorry, the first two open, one closed, the first one open, second one closed, uh, third one open, or the first one closed, and the other two are open, or the first one is closed, is open, and the other two close, are closed, or the first two are closed, the other one open. So there are eight uh, possible uh, combinations um, that can occur in that situation. So. The probability that a single giant will be open is 20%. So if we assume that the probability of a single giant being open is, is 20%, we can, um, we can put in a table that how we can find the outcome or the probability of each of these outcomes. So if we start with the probability that R3 are open, then that probability would be the probability of one being in multiplied by the probability of the other being open uh, uh, as well as time to others being open. So the probability, multiplying the probability of R3 being open, which would be 0.2 times 0.2 times 0.2. So there are three poss possible combinations of two being open so either the first two are open and the second and the third one closed, or the first one open, second one closed, and third one open, or the first one is open and the next two are closed. In all three cases, the probability would be of any one of those uh, three occur would be 0 0.032 as it's 0.2 of a probability of one open times probability of another one open, which is 0.2 times the probability of one uh, being closed, which is uh, 0.8. So if we, if we are to find the probability that two of the giants will be open, it will be uh, 0 0.032 multiplied by the three different combination, which is which is three, so it's 0 0.032 multiplied by three, would give you what is the probability of two of the giants being opened. So how about the probability of one giant being opened? There are again, three different scenarios. Either the first one is open and the other two are closed, or the first two are open, are closed, and the other one is open, or uh, the middle one is open and the two end ones are closed. So the probability of that occurring of, of one of those, for example, would be the, um, 
For example, the probability that the first one is open and the other two are closed would be probability of one being open, which is 0 0.2, times the probability of, uh, of the closed one, which is 0 0.8 times 0 0.8. So the probability of, 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 what, of the first one being open and the other two being closed would be 0 0.128. So therefore, the probability of one of those joints being open would be 0 0.128 multiplied by three. And of course, there's also the probability that all three joints are closed. In that case, it would be the 0.8, which is the probability that one is closed times 0 0.8 times 0 0.8 to give us 0 0.8. One, one, five, one, two. So, as you can see, that here uh, we show probability in the first case, the probability that x equals zero, meaning that all the giants are closed, then that probability is 0 0.512. The probability that one of the giants um, is, is open would be 0 0.384 and the probability that two giants are open would be 0 0.96 and the probability that all three are open would be 0 0.008 so now if we should sum these probabilities we would find that they sum to one and so Two, the two important properties of probability are, are solved. The first one would be that P of X is greater than or equal to zero. That means that, that means the probability of an outcome is always a positive. So it's either greater than or equal to zero. You cannot have a negative value for the probability of an outcome. And the second important property would be that the total, the sum of all these uh, probabilities uh, would be equal to one. So here is our probability distribution for our Sada Giants example. And we can show that given that it's uh, a discrete uh, random variable that we could actually construct a graphical view of probability distribution where we are able to show what would be the probability if there was zero if the zero giants were open as well as if one giant is open two are open or the probability that all three are open so we looked at a discrete random variable so What's continuous uh, random variable? So continuous random variable can take on any real value over a defined uh, um, interval. Say, for example, between one and two, there uh, there could be infinite uh, points there that, uh, if it was a continuous random variable, that um, that a variable could take on. So. In this example here, it says daily demand for water in a municipality may be between 10 and 200 million liters. So it could be anywhere between those values. So um, it's, it's seen as continuous, right? Continuous random variable may be approximated though as discrete random variable. So we can rather than having to use a continuous random variable, which is more difficult and more complex to work with, we we'll focus most of our attention on discrete random variable and use approximation of, use approximation, discrete approximation for any continuous random variable that we have to deal with. So rather than choosing a continuous random variable, Demand for water could be uh, characterized as high, medium, or low. So if we set it to be high, medium, or low, then it becomes discrete and it's no longer we're looking at a continuous 
uh, distribution. So figure 12 is an example of a probability distribution function for the future demand of water approximated by using discrete random variable. So here is our water probability distribution. So rather than looking at a continuous uh, curve, we would probably have a smooth curve running over the top of each of these, um, over the top of each of these uh, histograms. Uh, we use um, we use these bar charts here to represent very low low, medium, high, are very high. And each and therefore, it becomes a discrete uh, function. So another example, management of Westmont uh, Waxworth had uncertainty about uh, future series level of their line of statues um, that this question we're working on from last week. So they think that the probability that sales will be 500, maybe 50,000 per year for the next few years is 50%, and that pessimistic and optimistic scenarios have probability of 20% and 30% uh, respectively. So table 12 reproduces the annual cost for Cost information for wax two for the two wax uh, melters. So on the basis of expected annual cost, which is the best uh, choice. So here are the annual costs for fine details, and and here is annual costs for simplicity. Both of them showing what would be pessimistic. So. Um, if you're thinking that uh, demand is going to be low, that uh, we're probably going to have period like these where nothing is happening, no no money is, uh, no work is not flowing, no one is buying anything, so <coughs> you may have a pretty dim outcome. The probability of that occurring, we have 0.2, um, <coughs> and we have. For normal or expected event, we have um, that for and for fine details, the cost would be one one two, three one four, and for uh, for simplicity, it's one zero three five zero one. From an optimistic, it may be up to three one four eight one four and and uh, for uh, for simplicity is one eight six nine or one probability um, for each of these occurring are given same probability for pessimistic x and normal as well as optimistic. So sales level represented by discrete random variable x um, within x equal to uh, X1 equal pessimistic, X2 is expected, and X3 is optimistic. So the, ex the expected annual cost of fine detail wax melter is given where each each um, each cost of of fine details is then multiplied by the probability that that would occur. And that would give us the expected outcome of are the expected costs that we'll have for fine details. So also for simplicity, the expected cost would be would be um, each of the different costs multiplied by the by the probability that that outcome would occur. So we can see that for for simple uh, for, for simplicity that it's one two six six ninety seven so simplicity method is preferred based on lower annual cost because the expected annual cost based on the three outcome would be less using would be yes for 
would be less for a simple city. So formal methods aid engineers in uh, evaluating complex problems uh, where uncertainty occurs. So as we look at uh, decision trees, engineers will use will use it to help them in in making complex evaluating complex problems. Right? So it's provide means of decomposing a large problem and structuring it into sequence of smaller components. So with decision tree, to be able to structure a, a, what could be considered to be you know, a complex problem into smaller uh, components where we are better able to understand it. So, so just a variety of decision criteria to help with uh, with process of selecting a preferred course of action. Graphically, mean, a graphical means of structuring where uncertainties are characterized by probability distribution and clarified chance decision maker has and provides framework with which the deal with the risk involved. So it's easier to understand um, as we go along, we look at how we can set out a probability tree. So let's start uh, with, an, with an example. So Edwin Electronics has a, a factory for assembling TV and EE outsourced the TV screen to suppliers, but are considering screen production in house. So, uncertainty in demand for a company's TV has an important bearing on the decision. So, if future demand is low, outsource seems to be reasonable in order to have production costs, to, to save production costs. But if demand is high, then it may be worthwhile to produce the screen on site due to economies of scale. So Edwin Engineers represented their decision in a graphical manner with a decision tree. So here, uh, what are the things that we would consider to put into our decision tree? So first, so there are four main components in a decision tree. One, a decision node is represent a decision to be made by the decision maker, to do or not to do, to buy or to produce or not to produce or outsource. So a decision will have to be made. A chance node is represent event whose outcome is uncertain. So you're uncertain of after you have decided to not to produce, not not to produce, but to buy or to buy and not produce. What is, would there be a high demand for TV or will there be low demand? So a chance represents a chance of uh, uh, some form of uncertainty. The branches connect connect nodes from left to right. So as you go along, you would connect from one node to another node. Um, using branches, are depicting the sequence of possible decision and chance events. So the leaves indicate the value or the payoff associated with each term, terminal rightmost branch of the tree. So a decision tree grows from left to right. So here is a look at a decision tree. Uh, back to our Edwin Electronics. You can see, so first a decision is made and that's the decision node number one. So number one represents the decision node. And so a decision will be made to produce or to outsource. So if you outsource, the profit would be 10, and that would be what your profit is, whether you well, whether it's high demand or not. <clears throat> so if you produce, then the uncertainty is whether demand will be high or demand will be low. So if demand is high and the chance of demand is high is 0.6%, or, or not 0.6%, but 0.6, then 
profit could be fifteen dollars per unit. If demand is low, then and the possibility of that occurring is 0.4, then profit could be seven dollars per unit. So this is how you could set out uh, uh, that decision as to as to whether to produce or not, whether to produce or to outsource. So now using this information, we can we can then determine what uh, uh, what action to take based on uh, probabilities that we have. So whenever a chance mood follows a decision mood. It implies decision maker must anticipate the outcome of future uncertainty in decision making. So, as you can see here, our chance mode, which is number two, followed our, uh, followed our decision mode of number one. So that, as it says, that it implies that decision maker must anticipate the outcome of a future uncertainty. So what is the future uncertainty? The future uncertainty would be that high demand uh, or low demand. That would be uncertain. So when a decision node, node follows a chance node, it implies that decision must be made assuming that a particular outcome of chance event has happened. So uh, as we go along, you will see where a decision node uh, followed a chance node. And um, you have to consider the possibility that some uncertainty have occurred before. So with Edwin, uh, electronics engineering team, for example, has realized that a cost per screen may vary in the future. So if a cost per screen may vary in the future, so I uh, figure to include the additional uncertainty in the TV screen cost charge uh, by the supplier. So if you know that TV screen, uh, so here again, um, you can see Our decision making, and it says that in the additional uncertainty in the TV cost screen charge uh, by supplier. So if there would be increase in in the screen cost by suppliers, um, that would change our node at three. So the cost would increase. A probability that that could be 0 0.3. Cost could be the same 0 0.5, or cost could be 0 0.155. Each of these would mean that a different profit per unit. So Edwin has considered increasing in-house production of the screen. How does this change the decision making in the tree? So he has considered increasing in-house production of the screen. How would this change the decision making of the tree? So if he consider to increase decision uh, production in-house, again, it would be a decision to produce or not to produce, right? To increase the production or not to increase uh, the production. So therefore, we're using a square node at number four to indicate that this is a decision that will be made. So this, this decision is being made, um, taking into account that you assume that a chance, a chance node is was before. So if we go back and look uh, here, it says when a decision node follows a chance node, it implies that a decision must be made assuming that a particular outcome or chance event has occurred. So in this case, it assumes that the chance, the particular outcome of that chance event would have been demand is high. So demand, so the assumption is that demand is high. So if demand is high, a decision will be made to increase production or not to, or to increase production. So the decision, so if, if you decide to increase production, then the, the, ch 
chance or the probability that you'll be able to sell that increased production would be 0.5% and you will therefore earn profit of $18 per unit versus not able to sell and you will earn profit of $13 per uh, unit. That's a chance of 55%. So one criteria for select among risky alternatives is expected value. So we can use expected value, um, which is referred to here as EV, to carry out um, these to, to, to carry out the event as follows. So number one, we can structure the problem, uh, develop a decision tree. So we draw a decision tree just as we have here in this case. So we'll be able to decide to produce, not to produce. If we produce, demand could be high, our demand could be low. If demand is high, we may decide to increase production or, or keep seeing production. If we increase production, then say then we may able to sell or we may not be able to sell. Equally, if we outsource, then the decision, then they, there is a chance that there could be increased cost, cost could remain the same, our cost could decrease. So first we draw the decision tree. Then number two, moving from right to left on the tree. So we're starting from uh, uh, over on the right as far as we can, and then we move back uh, from the towards left. So at each chance node, compute the expected value of the possible outcome. So at each chance note, so if we go back here, and uh, we start in from the left, where we have our profit number one at the top with 18. So if we start in from there, and it says at number five, which is the first chance node, we will complete, it. we'll compute the expected value. So what would the expected value be in this case? So the expected value here would be 18 times 0.85 plus 13 times 0.5. So if I can just, uh, let's see if I could put that up. So if um Okay, guys, I'm not getting my board. I'm not getting my board to work. Uh, let's see. Okay, there we go. Okay, so if we are to calculate the 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 uh, expected value for the first node at the top, then we would use the probability, which in this case would be zero point four five. That probability will multiply a unit profit of eight, and then we would also find the probability, we'll find the expected value of the sales not occurring, which will be 0.55 multiplied by 13, which is a profit. So this would give us the expected value of the first branch. So, let me go back here. So at, at five, we would have found the expected value based on our calculation. That expected value, we would then compare 
with the expected value of uh, same production. So what would be the expected value of same production in this case? The expected value of same production would be 50, right? Because if we don't, in, if we don't increase uh, production, um, then we know for certain that production, that, that profit would be 50. So how do we determine what we take to, to number four? We will determine what expected value at four by choosing the better expected value. So in this case, if we work out the expected value to be, uh, let's see what was our expected value here, which was 0.45 times 18 plus 0.55 times 13 would give us an expected value of 6.25. So, is that 15.25 would become the expected value at node four. So the expected value at node four would become the expected value of, of, uh, of node four would be 15.25. And we will now decide that same production Will not, we, we will now decide that the decision we made there would be to increase production. So we, we will not go any further with same production. So we put two graphs to signify that. So we will then continue to find what is the expected value uh, of, um, for node two. So the expected value of uh, a node two would be the expected value um, of 0 0.6, so it will be 0 0.6 of the probability times the expected value at node four. And that in, we would compare it with the expected value for low demand, which would, which would be 0 0.4 times seven. So roll back, move from right to left on the tree, at each chance would compute the expected value of the possible outcome. B, at each decision node, select the option with the best expected value. So as we said in our example before, we would choose to go with uh, increased production because the expected value at the expected value for increased production would be 15.25 and greater than uh, same production of 15. So that would be used in our calculation. So this becomes the value associated with the decision node. So terminate options not selected. So we use two lines, two slashes to indicate that options are no longer um, interested. We are, that option is not being selected and continue until the leftmost node is reached. So we're going to continue until we reach node one. So conclusion, expected value associated with the final node is the expected value of the overall decision. So if we apply that to our Edwin uh, Electronics um, example, so the tree is further rolled back to the decision node of expected value E1.8, and which is equal to expected value of since E2 is higher than E3. So what are we talking about? So here is the example of um, Edwin. So you can see that if we start by saying that um, if we start here by saying that profit is high of 15 units, 15 unit profit uh, per unit, then the expected value for high demand versus expected value for low demand, uh, uh, sorry, and we should say plus because we're gonna add them together, right? Add, add the expected value of the high plus the expected value of the low. So at, e, at node two, would have an expected value of 11.8. Now that would be compared 
with the expected value of at node three to see which one is higher and which one is, um, so it would always go with the higher one. So at node three, the expected value would be eight multiplied by 0 0.3 plus 10 multiplied by 0.55 plus 15 multiplied, sorry, point, 0 0.15 multiplied by 12. And that would give us a third value uh, of 9.7. So at that point, we would decide which one would become the expected value of node one. And the expected value of node one would be one which is higher. And so in that case, this is higher at 11.8. So that would become the expected value of node one. So as you can see, if expected value of two is greater than expected value of three, then node one will take on the, the expected value of two. And of course, if we were looking at cost, uh, so here we're looking at profit. If we were looking at cost, then this would be the reverse. If we're looking at cost, then the one with the lower cost would be the one we choose. So if so in that case, we're looking at cost, then we would look for the one with the, where the expected value is lower. So here is the extended view of of Edwin Electronics. So remember, we said that at, if high, at high demand, a decision will be made to increase production or to use same production. And if we increase production, we'll be able to sell, probability of being able to sell is 0.45, and the probability of not being able to sell is 0.55. <coughs> So I said before that expected value at node five would be the would be fifteen point two five, right? Uh, we calculated that earlier, fifteen point two five. That fifteen point two five would become the expected value at node four because fifteen point two five is greater than the expected value of same production which is 15. So in that case, we are not going any further with 15. So we place two slashes on, well, we're not going any further with same production. So we, we place two slashes on that node, on that uh, branch uh, just above node four. So next, the expected value of high demand of 0 0.6 times 6.25 plus 0 0.4 times 7 would then give us our 11.95 for expect, expected value at node 2. So we will now compare that expected value at node 2 with the expected value at node 3. So the expected value at node three would be 9.7. So therefore 11.95 being greater than 9.7, the decision would be made to produce and therefore expected value at one would become the expected value uh, would equal to the expected value at two, which would be 11.95. Would I would also put uh, the two slashes again on the outsource because we are not deciding to pursue that option because so option is terminated. So <clears throat> we look at the concept of a random variable um, and we talk about that random variable can take on uh, different numbers and the probability of those outcome can be, uh, we can have either discrete uh, probability uh, distribution or, or continuous uh, distribution, but we can approximate uh, continuous using discrete and we can use that. We can set up um, our probability distribution based on that. 
We also look at structuring decision making tree and how we can help to use it to do our evaluation using a particularly the sector value approach. Okay. Any question with regard to that? Are you guys still nope. there? Nope. Are you guys still there? I only have one person I'm hearing. Um, that we're still here. Okay. Yep. Yep. Uh, I'll tell you. Yep. yep. Okay. So let's work on some questions. Um, I have. I tried posting a question earlier. I'm not sure what was happening, but I was unable to, to get on, so I um I didn't post them. So I'm gonna like uh, say what they are and then we try and do them. So I'm starting at page 458, question 12.9. Let's see if I can bring it up here. I'm just trying to locate a question in this so you guys can be able to see a uh, question. Okay, maybe I'm not good at using this. So I'm not locating question three point uh Question 12.29 and page 458. Oh, here's it. A new southern machine, I think that's it, right? Yeah, oh yeah, that's right here. I was looking properly enough. All right, guys, so we're going to start by working with question here, question 12.29, a new car, a new wave solder machine is expected to generate monthly saving of either 800,000, 1 million, or 1.2 million, or 1.4 million over the next two years. The manager is not sure about the likelihood of four, of the four saving scenarios. So she assumes that they are equally likely. So what is the present for us of the expected monthly savings? Use a mar of 12% compounded monthly for this problem. So I'm gonna give you guys uh, five minutes to try this question.
So how would you approach a question? Any, any, any suggestion? Any suggestion, guys? Oh, the first question. Anyone? No one? Come on, it's unlike you guys not to have a suggestion. Um, if they're going to occur equally over the next two years, could you assume that each of them happens, um, what would that be, six months each, uh, and then calculate the present worth? Um, not quite. Um, remember the that problem, each of yeah, them, the problem there is you don't know when. Yeah, remember that each of them are not going to occur. Remember uh, that they are, um, so it's either, uh, it's, it says either 800,000 or 1 million or 1.2 million or 1.4 million. So it is possibility that it can be either four of them occurring. And, and the question says the manager is not sure about the likelihood of four scenarios, so not sure which one of them is going to be. So she's weighting each, all of them equally. So in that case, what does it mean? I have an, an idea here. Maybe you can tell me. I, I, first, I answer your question. It means that it's going to be 25% for each one, right? Yeah. But do we, would we go through and calculate the present worth for each of those four values um, based on the MAR of 12% compounded monthly in the two years and then multiply each one by 0.25 and add them together? Well, you could do it that way. Um, that would certainly give you your answer. Or you could uh, do it by, um, by finding 25% of them first. Or by, okay. adding all four, or by adding all four together and divide, dividing by four, right? Because it's where you get the average. Because that's, what, that's why we're doing when we take expected value. We're taking the average. And then you find right. the... the uh, uh, the, the present worth. The present worth, right. So either, either of those ways, it, you should come back to the same answer. By the way, guys, as you, I hope you are working a question. As you are working it, um, I hope you are aware that I think it was posted this week that your exam will be on Saturday, um, April. I give you a wrong date here. On Saturday, April twenty fifth, and it will be in the afternoon. Are you guys aware of that? I didn't know that, but I know that now. Okay, so it would be on the on the last um, it's the week of yeah, Saturday, April twenty fifth. I think it is. Let me just make sure I confirm it. I'm not giving a wrong date here. Well, I think that's the date that's posted. Um,
Okay, so you guys finished with the question? Still working? I got 72,468. Oh, that's a big number. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. What do I have? Let, let me try it again. Well, my number is bigger than that, actually. Okay, so what? How did you oh, how did you set the question? Up? What did you get for your um for your expected value? What did you get for your? Uh, I did it the way that you the way you suggested. I did it by yeah. adding like the average of those four values and uh -huh. finding the present the present worth for uh, um, twenty four periods. Twenty four period using. Using 12%? Oh, I did it at, I did it at 12, 12, 12%, so I shouldn't have done it. I should have no. done it differently. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. sorry. Yeah. Okay, so your, your exam will be um, between 2 and 5 p.m. on uh, on April 25th. Sorry, Greg, is that exam information posted somewhere on Econostoga? I have to work, but not. Maybe it's not yet posted. Maybe it was just um, uh, the, what I have. But, I, but that's what it's going to be. No, I don't think it's going to change again anyway. So it should be that day. Okay. Um, yeah. I thought, I thought it was posted, but then I look back, I realized it was a different email that was sent to you guys. Okay. All right, let's, so let's, um, let's see how we can work out the, this question that um, we are looking at. We said that the expected value of savings per month would be the taking expected value of each of these. And we could have done it a number of ways. And how I do it is I have expected uh, value of month savings. Right, would equal to um, 0.25 of 800,000 plus 0.25 of 1,000,000, so it's a million, plus 0.25 of 1.2 million plus 0.25 of 1.4 million. So when we when we do all of this, we have 1.1 million as our expected value. So now we can find our present worth based on the 1.1 million would be 1.1 million times present worth given the annual worth of 1% because we're doing it monthly, right? And we have, so we should have 1% here, 1%. And we have 24 months, so 24 months. So when we look up this number, we should have 21.243 multiplied by our 1.1 million. Uh, or my join a line, not sure. Okay, equals, and that should give us about 23, 367 
zero, zero, zero. All right, so that's what the answer is supposed to be. Sorry, Greg, it says present worth of the monthly savings. So that, I mean, that can't be 23 million per month. Uh, we have but, to divide that by is it, it Did it say present worth of the monthly savings? Um, well, let's see what question yeah, yeah. Now, That would be. It says, what's that, the present worth of the expected monthly savings? Um, so that would be the present worth of expected monthly savings. Yeah. Remember that it's it's um, so the expected monthly savings can be either eight hundred thousand all the way up to four hundred thousand. This sorry, fourteen one point four million, and this would be over how long? Twenty four months. So over twenty four months. If you are saving at, at 14, at 1.4, for example, that would be a lot of money. So, so it could be, yeah. And remember that you're also, um, well, you're discounting it. So that would make have a lot of effect. But do you, do you understand what I'm saying, um, Darren? I think so, but I'm just saying are, that are 23 upper, million figures. We divide that end, by 24. Yeah, at the upper end, it would be 1.4 million um, times 24. So at the upper end, it's actually 33 million. So that would be upper end. At the lower end, it would be 800,000 times 24. So it would be 19 million. So um, falling somewhere in the middle is at 23 million seems reasonable. Do you see, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I just expected a monthly number rather than a number that represents the full two years. But yeah, that's fine. No, 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 it's not. But, but the amount given is monthly, right? It says expected monthly savings. So it may look it may look huge, but we're talking about a big company. That's right. That's right. <laughs> it may look like a huge number, Darren. I understand what you're saying because these numbers are large, right? So it looks very large for, for monthly figures, but if I talking about a large company, then it could be. All right. Well, we have to we have to go with what is there, right? It says that it says the monthly savings. Um, so if it if it had said annual savings, then we would have to uh, assume we'd have to divide by twelve. But it didn't say that. It says monthly savings. All right. Yeah, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> okay. All right. Anyone else? Any other question? Anyone else didn't understand? Um, Good question. Okay, so let's do question 12.30. So again, I'll let you guys try it first and then we, we can do it together. It says Regional Express is a small courier service by introducing a new uh, computerized tracking device it anticipates some increase in revenue. So current estimated, current estimated as two point, uh, two dollars and seventy five cents per parcel. The possibility, new revenue ranges from two dollars ninety five to nine to five dollars per parcel, with probabilities shown in the table below. Assuming that the regional Monthly capacity is 60,000 um, parcels, and the monthly operating and maintenance cost is 8,000. What is the present for us of expected revenue over 12 months? And it says that regional MAR is 12% compounded uh, monthly. So you have the outcome, the probability of each of these um, outcomes, either $2.95, $3.25, Three fifty four dollars and and five dollars, and then you are asked now to find what is the present for it. Did you put this, the question on the screen? Uh, you are not seeing the question. No. It says sharing. Um, maybe I, oh, sorry. I know I'm sharing the wrong thing. 
So let me stop this and share the question. Okay. See the question now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So can you guys try the question and um, then we will work it together. It's similar to the one we did before. Except now we just we are calculating uh, the expected value of the revenue per barrel. So, for example, we calculate the expected value of the revenue per barrel and use that expected value to help us in our calculations of the present work. All right, so I'll give you guys five minutes. Guys, they are, they are done? Uh, professor. Uh-huh. I got 1,281,000. Uh, 1,281,000. And now yeah. I think it's 
I think you should get a little bit more than that. What did you use as your, um, so what did you get as your expected, the expected price per, per barrel, a uh, revenue per barrel, yeah. I got 3.58. Yeah, that's good. So how do you, how did you set your question? How did you, how did you calculate the present work? So I, I took the 3.58, I multiplied it by 60,000 mm -hmm. to get the amount of money. And then, so that's a monthly cost. And then the, um, what's it called, sorry. The, um, the maintenance cost is $8,000 a month. Right. Oh, I think I might've used the wrong MAR. Instead of 12%, I should be using 1%, correct? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else? Is it 2.3 million? Yeah, 2.3 million. It sounds, sounds uh, good. In this case, we are calculating the uh, present value of the revenue, right? So we're just going to we're just going to based on the probability and each and each one we multiply. So the expected value of the revenue would equal to 0 0.1 times 2.95 plus 0 0.35 times 3.25 plus 0 0.3 times 3.50 plus 0 0.15 times $4 plus 0 0.1 times $5. Okay, so that should give us uh, an amount of Three dollars and sixty-eight cents per barrel uh, per parcel. So from this now we are able to to calculate the the present worth. So the present worth would equal to our. Three dollars and fifty-eight cents multiplied by the number of parcels that is expected, which is sixty thousand, minus our eight thousand per month, and then we will find the present value of this given this annuity at. 1% and uh, 12, right, 12 months. So this gives us two or six, two or six, not two or eight, two or six, 
800 times 11.255. So guys, make sure to look, look up a number, make sure the number that I have is correct. So I have 2327534. Okay, so again this wasn't too this wasn't too um too difficult. But once you understand the, um, the expected value approach, then all we're doing here is applying what we have learned um, over the last uh, 12 or so weeks, which one of the main tools is to calculate the net present value. So that's all we are doing in the, these two examples that we have done so far. So let's try another one. Let's try 12 point, uh, let me make sure that, yeah, 12.31. And I'll uh, make sure I put the right, the right one up for you guys. Yeah, 
That would be fish. Anyone finish the question? Anyone attempted the question? I got 6,480. Does that sound close to right? It sounds close, but um, I, I, I'm probably off by just under 100. I have 6,300 and something. Um, so I'm not sure if, we, if you were running something off. What did you get for your... Um, so what did you get for your N that you used? Right, because you used a formula, right? Did you? Uh, I think you maybe. So formula. I did uh, 0 0.4 times 4 plus 0 0.4 times 5 plus 0 0.2 times 6 to get 4.8. And yeah. then I took 4.8 times it by 12 months, and that gives me 57.6. So that's the N you, that's the N you use, 57.6. Yeah. Okay, so that's the N I used to. I think you'll probably do some rounding off um, because the, what did they use for your um, for your your, your interest? Uh, I use zero point eight three. Yeah, so we got probably some rounding off there. Then that's probably where. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Sorry, Professor, what was your answer? Um, I had some back action. Six, 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 three, eight, three. Get okay, that? No, I got much smaller than that. <laughs> oh. I got 168. Um, 168? Yeah. So, uh, what did you get as your... Um, what did you what did you have as your as your as your cost total cost right? My total cost was one hundred and forty. Yeah, and so then you you that's only monthly. have they were only multiplying that by one point something. That's that's why your factor came out to be one point something. Uh, let me check. My factor came out to be one point two. Yeah, uh, that's too small. Uh, did you use the right formula? Um, I used the the present uh, the PA P over A I N formula, but my my number yeah. of terms was fifty seven point six. Yeah, so and you should be using one plus I over N. This this is the formula you use. You see my screen. Minus one, yeah, uh, and then I times one plus i to the exponent n yeah times yeah that's what but, i use this is the formula i should be using so you should get yeah, a factor right. around around uh 45.99 is right, um so for the i value yeah let me just go through the question and so you you'll see probably where your error is okay for the i value is it divided by 12 or is it just 10 percent no, you have to divide by 12, right? Because it's 10% it's per, uh, per year, and it's compounded per month, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I yeah. think I know where it went wrong. Okay. So... Yeah, I got, I got 45, 45.6. Yeah, that would give you uh, the right answer. Yeah, 6383. Sorry. Yeah, no, no, that's okay. Okay, so expected life would be, would be 0 0.4. Uh, and if we work in months, um, just do one step, two step in one, we have 0 0.60 plus 
zero point two times seventy two. So this would give you a total uh, number of expected months of seventy six point six months. And so now we can calculate the present verse, right? Which would be our total cost of 90 plus 30 plus 20. And we find then the present worth of that. Okay, I'm just gonna write this like this percent. So it's 10 over 12 and my N was 57.6. So if I plug this into my formula that I have at the top, right, which would be 1.00833, right, and raised to 57.6 over 0 0.00833 into 1.00833. And this would be to the 57.6. So give you 140 multiplied by the factor, which will be 45.6. So, um, so this would what would give you a factor, right? So let me just put a, a bracket around this. So this would give a, give us a factor of forty five point five nine nine, and our answer of six three eight three point eight zero. Okay, everyone, anyone, any question? Anyone uh, raising objection to the answer? Anyone raising objection to the answer? No one? Everyone is cool with the answer? Okay. Let's look at uh, 12.32. I'll try to share here. Okay.
Any answer so far? Any answer so far? I got one hundred twenty seven thousand. Hundred and twenty seven thousand, um, and uh, that's for the annual cost. Yeah, that's an annual cost. Okay, because okay, I have one hundred and seventeen. So we are oh, yeah, one hundred seventeen. Like, yeah, we are like ten thousand apart. What's your expected value? Um, so I got uh, uh, I got a hundred and hundred and eleven ton for the expected value. Yeah. Oh, sorry. No, I, I no, uh, I, no, no, no. Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong thing. So okay, I was that was for my um, my middle one. So. A total here should be where did I write? Oh, okay. No, I didn't work it that way. Sorry, I didn't work. Um, I, I, the so I got three different uh, expected value that I then used to find um, the the annual cost. So I have the, my optimistic value. Then I have, um, so my optimistic value would just have been the 75,000, right? Because there's, yeah. no, there's no lead time. So then my, my, um, for the second scenario, it would be um, 111,000. And then for the third scenario, it would be about 143,000. So did you get those numbers? I just did them all together. So. Oh, you did them all together. So, um, oh, okay. Sorry, Shiraz, what was your value? I got 127.608. Yeah, that's what I got. You got that as well? So maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, um, doing did, it all did, together, I got did, the exact same thing. Oh, you did them all together as well. So did you take account for the lead time? Yeah, so I did the expected value of the lead time. So I did 0 0.15 times 1, 0 0.5 times 2, 0 0.35 times 3, and got 2.2. So then I took that value and solved for the value of the annuity of a of the future value okay uh, okay i see and remember what you're finding is annual cost right yeah so i okay. use the a over f okay um, insurance. um yeah. yeah i don't think i don't think the way you set it out is, is um 
I'm, I'm, I can't see exactly what you have, but I'm not sure you are applying the expected. Um, if you are discounting them properly, so so for example, what I did was you find the annual charge of um, I find the annual charge of the first of the second scenario because that one wasn't annualized, right? Two of the two hundred and forty thousand. And I also find it for the the pessimistic one, five hundred thousand. Then after finding after annualizing those, then I then find expected value. And so I have one hundred and seventeen. But we when we work it, we'll see. Maybe you guys are right. Maybe just they're just um, my numbers are off. But let's let's do it, and then we go through the numbers. Okay, so, so in the first case, our lead time is, is one year, right? So because our lead time is, is one year in the first case, we have our, and our cost. Uh, optimistic and our cost of the optimistic would be uh, 75,000, right? It's already annualized. So there's no need to annualize it any further for one year. So the uh, cost of the expected I have it will be two hundred and forty annual of the future value, and that will be five percent, right? And it's for two years, and they equal to two hundred and forty thousand. Multiply by no my factor I have is zero point four six five one two. Then for the annual cost of the pessimistic and that would be five hundred thousand multiply by okay, we're gonna analyze it. Of um, okay, I think this should be fifteen percent, right? So this should be fifteen percent. So here it's fifteen percent and Fifteen percent and how many years? And three years. So this should be oh, I didn't write this number right. So this would be one 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 six two eight. Eight, and here we would have five hundred thousand multiplied by our factor of zero point two eight 
seven, nine, eight. That would give one, four, three, point nine, nine. Sorry, that's not one. That's comma. Nine, nine, zero. Okay, so those are my numbers in terms of uh, uh, annualizing each of each of the calculations. So now all I need to do is just to add them together. Find the expected uh, annual cost. So that would be zero point one five, right? Times seven hundred. 75,000, sorry, plus 0 0.5 times 111628.8 plus 0 0.35 times 143.8. I keep on saying point one four three nine nine zero. So this is how I get one one seven four six zero point nine. All right, guys. So check my calculations and tell me if um if, if I miscalculate something. All right, if I pick the wrong factors, let's check my factors. Just make sure they're correct. Anyone get this number? And says no. No one answered. Fifteen and two. Guys, anyone get my number? Anyone are uh, yes, no? Close enough. No, I'm dealing with a hurt son over here, so I didn't get a chance to do it. Okay. Anyone else? Anyone else uh, got my number? I'm checking it back and I'm not seeing any error, so I um, I think my numbers are correct. Yeah. Okay. So that's the that's the numbers that I have. I think those are correct. So um, I'm not sure where you guys made the error and what how the way you approach it, but this is how it should actually be done. All right. Any questions? All right. Let's let's do. We have. I want I want to cover another three questions. Uh, we can go quickly and try and finish, and um, rather than try to take a break, let's finish the other three questions. Is that okay with you guys? I want to take a break. Sure. Yeah. 
All right, so let's do the other three questions we're going to do is uh, question, uh, let's make sure it's the same number here. Okay, I lose that. I'm not seeing the book. Okay, that's question 12.33, 12.33. So we're going to do question 12.33, question 12.35, and question 12.36. Those are the three questions that we are going to do. So let me just share this. So question 12.33, this question. Okay, so I'm not able to show the entire question like that. Maybe if I reduced it, I probably could. Still can't. Don't allow me to share both. So um, that's the first part of the question. Mega City Hospital is selling lecture tickets. All proceed goes to its cancer research program. Each ticket costs a hundred dollars. But the campaign catchphrase promises a one in a thousand chance of winning. So the probability of winning would be one one over a thousand. So question continues and it says. Just increase that this here. The prize is a dream house, which is worth at 250,000 on the basis of a decision tree analysis. Is buying the ticket worth it? So you're supposed to do a decision tree. All right, so since this is the first one, let, let, me, let me make the first, uh, let me try this one. See how we would go about uh, doing this. Okay, so if we follow um, the rules in terms of uh, making the, the decision tree, we're going to first start with our number one node, right? And then we're going to go whether I should buy the ticket or not buy the ticket, right? So decision is to buy the ticket or not buy a ticket, all right? See, if we buy the ticket, not buy, so that's our decision. So, buy the ticket there's if we don't buy the ticket there's nothing right zero 
is the outcome. We're not gonna get anything if we don't buy the ticket. So if we buy the ticket, all right, we could there are two uh, possible outcomes. One, you could win the house, or two, not win anything. So, what are the outcomes? Win the house. And if you win the house, it's the payoff would be, what would the payoff be? Okay, so a probability of doing that is also, it's one in 1,000, so that's 1.009, and the probability of winning house is 1.009, and the payoff would be, because we have paid $100 for the ticket, the payoff would be, Two hundred and forty-nine thousand nine hundred. Right? If you hundred for the ticket, so the difference would be the pair. If you didn't win anything, which is most likely anyway. If you didn't win anything, which is win nothing. Uh, the probability of that would be point, point, point what? Point nine nine nine, right? So, and the outcome of that would be what? What would the outcome of that be? The outcome of that would be our one hundred dollar mm -hmm. that we have lost, right? Agree? Someone was saying something. Huh? So what someone saying something? I was just saying, I was just saying negative one hundred. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, same thing. Okay. No, no. Okay. All right. So that would be the outcome if we if we didn't win the ticket. If we didn't win the 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 raffle. So following our rules, we're going to start at the furthest right and then work our way over towards one. So the expected value that we would place at node two would be node two here. So the expected value at two would be 0 0.001 times our 249.900, right? Plus 0 0.999 times over minus 100. So the expected value here would be uh, over 249, 249.9 plus uh, that should be minus. We have a minus. Let's, let's go minus. Okay. Yeah. Plus my. Oh come on. Wait, I'll just write it in negative. Minus ninety. Okay, it's not going so well. I think my board is tired. Okay, so that's 19.9 minus 99.9. There you go. So this gives us exactly 150. Right? So what would we place here? We place one. $150, that would be the expected outcome of this. And if this would be the expected outcome, what would be the expected outcome of this node? 
the outcome here is zero. So zero, so 150 is greater than zero. So therefore the expected outcome here would be 150. So B1, and this would be B2. And we could say that E1 would equal to E2, right? And why? Because we always accept the higher outcome. So that's because uh, Okay, so we draw a line here because E2 is greater than zero, right? So we're comparing it to zero if you did nothing. So therefore, E2 is greater than zero. So our choice would be two, Purchase a ticket because the expected value of purchasing the ticket would be uh, $150. So it's much greater than our, well, it's not much, but it is greater than our $150 or $100 that would be invested in the ticket. Okay. All right, let's do question 12, 3, 12. Point three five. So that's twelve point three five. Question thirty five. So in this question, you're asked to do a basis of five year study period. What is the present worth of the new robot for each performance uh, scenario? Assume BB is my 12%. And then you're going to construct a decision tree on the basis of e views of the expected value. Should BB approve the development uh, of, the new, of a new robot? So those are the two questions that we're going to answer. So you're going to start by finding the present first of each of the, the different um, performances.
Okay, anyone with a solution or a partial solution so far? Anyone with a, a partial solution? Uh, so you said to find the present worth of all these first, correct? Right. So the you have to. So the question asks is first of all to calculate um, the present worth of each of the scenarios. So in each scenario, you're going to calculate what would the present would be based on that scenario. So for example, if you pick the high performance, then you would have the high performance, how much would you uh, earn in the high performance? High performance would be 500,000, right? So you would use your yep. cost of, uh, of minus 550,000 and then you would earn 500,000 for the next five years um, at a mark of 12% per year. So that you would use to calculate your present worth for high performance. You would do the same for the other three, for the other two. So I have values for those if you want to compare. Okay, so what do you so have for? For the high performance, I got 1.8 million. Um, 1.8. What do you have for the rest? Um, the medium I got 901,000. Uh -huh. And then the low I got 540,000. Okay, um, we'll have the same numbers. All right, so you are finding for if we go to the high performance, we're finding the present worth, right? You have you have a first cost of minus 550,000. You have that, right? That's what, that's what you have for your first cost? Oh, shit. I didn't subtract that. 
right, give me a sec. <laughs> I see the issue. So for the high performance, high performance, I just want to make sure the present worth is six hundred and eleven thousand point seven forty. Uh, percent worth? What do you mean when you say the percent worth? I you mean the, the present worth? Oh, sorry, the present worth. Yeah. No, I I have about two times what you have. Um, so you have. So you have the first cost of five hundred and fifty thousand, right? Do you have yes. that? Yes. That's negative. Yep. And then yep. you, you put, then you find the annual. Then then you you find the present uh, worth of the annuity. So remember, it's an annuity. So it's um, twelve and five, twelve oh. uh, percent and five years. Do you have that? But we don't we don't multiply we we multiply that by five hundred or five hundred times thirty five percent. Do we account for the thirty five percent? No, we don't reach there yet. We're just finding the we're just finding the present worth of each performance. So we're not we're not ready to, okay, to bring it together. We're just finding the present worth of it. So we take oh, each, okay, each of them. Then, then I know what the other is. Yeah, so we're taking each of the performances and say what would the present worth be in this case. I have three new values. Uh -huh. Do you mind if I check them real quick? Yeah, go ahead. So I have 1.25 million, so mm -hmm. 1 million 252,000. Yeah, that's good. Um, then the the medium is 351,000. Perfect. And then the low is negative 9,250. Uh, I have 280, but I guess you're close enough. So yeah, yeah, you you're on the right track. You're getting the right numbers. So it's just a matter of doing it, the second part now, which is the decision tree. All right. Anyone else? All right, let's take a look at it. Okay, so A asks us to do um, to calculate the present worth of each of this scenario. So, yeah, sorry guys, just for me. Okay, so if I have Present work of the high performance. 
or equal to my first cost of 550,000 plus my 500,000 at, and I need the present value of that annuity, remember it's an annuity, at my interest of 12% and my N of five. So this would be minus 1,550 plus 5,000 times 3.60. And this should give you one million two hundred and fifty two thousand four hundred. And two uh, medium performance. Okay, we have, we're just doing the same thing. We're just using a different number for uh, the performance. 350,000. And this one should be three fifty one two hundred. And for the third one, we're doing uh, the performance, and that would be this. The performance of one fifty. Five. This should give you minus two, sorry, minus nine two eight zero. So now we have to do the tree. It's gonna be difficult for me to draw on this, so I'll, I'll show you a picture of the tree from the solution. Does everyone follow me so far with here? Everyone, everyone up to this, up to here, before I switch yeah. to uh, B? Okay. Ah, that's that. Okay, let's do, let's do B. Okay, so here are the numbers that we just found, All right? And then here is our probability tree. So if you if, remember, we always start on the left. So first, we draw our probability by drawing. Here we know the first decision was to decide to use the new design or not to use the new design. We if we didn't use the new design, there's nothing to earned from it, um, right? But if you use the new design, it could either be high performance, or medium performance, uh, low performance, medium performance, or high performance. 
And we know that annual savings that we would receive from each of those would be 160 for low, 250 for medium, and 500 for high. And we have calculated the present worth based on those. And so the present worth is here. Now, as we go from left to right, we're going to calculate the expected value. And this expected value of 252. 532, 252,532 would be calculated based on uh, the present worth of these right here. So if I may, let's see if I can write on this. Okay, so for example, the present worth here and as a matter of fact, I don't need to do that. It's already calculated here down the bottom. So present work here in this case would be right here. So you can see we're just taking expected value of all three, and then we find ourselves 252,000. This 252,000 would represent node two. And at node two, we then choose uh, based on which one to go to node one based on uh, the two outcomes, two scenarios. And the two outcomes would be in the new design, a decision, new design, a uh, no design, and the no design would be zero. And if you go for a design, it has an expected value of 252. So because it's higher than the zero, we'll choose it for node one. So node one would be equal to node two because node one is, because node two is greater than zero. So BB should approve the development of the new robot because it has a, a positive expected value. It's greater than not doing it. And that is two fifty two five uh, three two. Okay. Any question? I'll post I'll post the, the decision tree for you guys so you can see it um, as part of your uh, I'll post that as well as part of the solution. All right, so uh, we were going to do this question, but tell you what, I'm going to give you this question to do as your as your homework, and then I will post the solution to it. So please do question 12.36 for homework, and uh, I will post the solution to question uh, to this. Okay, so I will also on the weekend, I will put up your assignment for your 10%. So you will be able to you submit that on the last day. You have until the last day of school, which is the Friday, not the Saturday. The Friday, which would be the 24th of April. So you have until the 24th of April to submit the assignment. Um, I will also put up your quiz and normally I'll give you a day or two to do the quiz. So you, you will, I'll put your quiz up and that will also be your final quiz. We would have covered eight quizzes and that would, I'll choose the best 10, best five, sorry, to give you also your 10%. Okay, are there any questions with, with regards to those? Greg? Can I just confirm that if we've already done the presentation with our group, then we don't need to do that assignment? Or is that on top of that presentation? <laughs> uh, no, it's not on top of it. Uh, the assignment for the 10% is, is, um, is in place of the group. So if you have done the group, it's OK, you're fine. You just need to make your submission. OK, thank you. Yes. 
Anyone else? All right, guys, if there's no question for me, we'll close here for today. There'll be no class next week because I think it will be a holiday. So the next time I see you, it will be week 14. At that time, we will talk about your final exam. And we will go through all the things that we need to finish up for the semester before you go after doing your exam. So keep safe. Make sure to stay indoors as much as we can. Remember, remember we have to protect ourselves and protect uh, those uh, around us. So have a good weekend, guys. See you next next two weeks. Thank you. Wishing you the same. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Yeah.